This is the Samsung Galaxy S21, the most affordable device in the S21 series. Now, just because this is the case, doesn't mean it is inferior in any way to its bigger, more expensive siblings. Let's begin this review with the positives of the Galaxy S21, starting with its 6.2 inch Full HD Plus AMOLED display with a 120Hz adaptive refresh rate. Yes, unfortunately enough, it no longer has its predecessor sharper 1440p display, but it's not that big of a deal in the sense that you are still getting a very pleasant display to look at. On top of that, the lower resolution display and its adaptive refresh rate also ensures that you can get very good battery life with the S21, which is certainly the case. On average, I could get between 5 to 6 hours of screen on time with this phone, which is quite impressive for a phone this compact with a 4000 mAh battery. This level of battery life is possible not just because of the display, but also because of the Exynos 2100 processor under the hood of the Galaxy S21. Built on a 5nm process, it is quite a bit more power efficient than its predecessor 7nm process. Of course, it is also a very fast processor that can keep up with any task that I throw at the phone. Whether it's gaming or multitasking with multiple tabs, it can do so effortlessly. And then there's the design of the Galaxy S21. Although it doesn't look all that different from its predecessor from the front, it's a very different story on the back. The camera system for now is housed in a contour cut camera design that gives the phone a very unique aesthetic that I personally quite like. This is especially the case with this phantom violet colorway of the S21, which draws attention to the phone's dual tone design. And then there's the camera performance of the Galaxy S21, which is, as expected, excellent. This is especially the case with the 12 megapixel primary sensor, which has very good detail preservation, wide dynamic range, and although the colors are a little bit saturated, it doesn't look artificial by any means. Naturally, the space zoom feature is still retained with the S21. In the case of this phone, it can do up to 30 times space zoom with 3 times hybrid optic zoom. In my testing, the zoom performance at up to 10 times look pretty good with decent detail preservation. But if you go up to 20 times and 30 times, it's a little bit of a blurry mess. But to be fair, it's not really practical to go up to that level of zoom, so there's that. Now let's move on to the not so great aspects of the Galaxy S21, starting with the camera again. <laughs> Yes, the camera can take good shots regardless of lighting situations, but there is a wide disparity between the camera quality of the different sensors. As I've mentioned before, the 12 megapixel primary sensor can take really, really good looking shots, but the quality just goes down as you switch to the 64 megapixel telephoto camera and the 12 megapixel ultra wide angle lens. This has been the case with many, many other smartphones with multiple camera configurations, so it's not a problem that is unique to the S21. Aside from that, throughout my time with the S21, I do notice that it doesn't have particularly good thermals. This is especially evident when I'm photographing for a long time or when I'm playing demanding games like Genshin Impact. The top half of the phone gets pretty hot to the point that it gets a little bit uncomfortable. When this happens, the performance of the phone seems to throttle down a little bit as well. Camera feels a little bit more sluggish and games also feel a little bit more laggy. Last but certainly not least is the steep asking price of the Galaxy S21. For the Malaysian market, only one variant of the phone is offered with 256GB of storage and 8GB of RAM for a whopping 3,699 ringgit. If you look around, you may have noticed that the starting prices of the Galaxy S21 are lower in other markets. But this is because Samsung Malaysia is not bringing in the more affordable 128GB models of these devices. If the Korean company had done so, it is very possible that the starting prices of the Galaxy S21 would be lower than the Galaxy S20 last year. So then, is the Samsung Galaxy S21 worth considering? Well, if you want a powerful flagship smartphone in a compact form factor, the Galaxy S21 is easily one of the best options in the market now. Yes, it is a little bit expensive, but you are getting a very refined, very polished phone. It looks sleek, it is fast, and it has reasonably good camera performance as well. In a market where flagship smartphones are quite big and bulky, the Galaxy S21 certainly stands out. 
And that is it for our review of the Samsung Galaxy S21. Like this video if you like it, subscribe to our channel if you haven't already and always stay tuned for more good stuff to come here in Next Rift.